Dr. Roa Espinosa. Oh, oh. So. Uh, and Carrie Doyle. Um, but I think Dr. Roa is a good thing. Uh, from from SpoonNet LLC and Trident Processes. Yeah, the microphone is on. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. What? The microphone is on? Yes. Okay, thank you. One of the things important here is if you don't have separation, you don't have water, you don't have nutrients. You have to separate them. Fifteen years ago, we started a quest of separation with Kerry RC. And then, after the separation, we were only successful when Kerry Doyle found a piece of equipment that was very important. I'm going to show you. Well, how well this one goes? <coughs> Everything happened, but it has to be a lot of people. And this is the Trident team and the soil net. We are around 20, 25 people. And we go all over the world, all the United States and Canada. Thank you to these people. We are successful. Okay. I am going to play you this. This is... Uh, what's Oh, explain? Okay, this is the KDA, the Kerry Doyle separation machine. Okay, this is what happened here. It's always working, huh? Can we start again? Okay, this is the KDS, and this is the second stage of the separation system, where you have 95, 90% uh, separated and the particle size at less of one micron and it's very difficult. This is the type of water that we are obtaining with 99.99% and this is very important because this type of solids, after you remove all the solids, is 5 to 6% nitrogen, which is most of them is protein. The protein of the manure is there. Also, this little machine also with the, the baby of carry, which allow us to get that uh, cake into a manageable form, or to distribute it, or to convert it into pellets, into anything. As you saw, we have, this is the installation that we have in Fair Oaks, where we have two DAF machines of 400 square feet, then we have the polymer delivery system, which the new ones are coming with uh, flow meters where we are going to deliver the polymer according to the changes in flow or the changes in concentration of solid. And these are the solids. Then, after you have the solids, this is the water that we have. And this one have between 1.8 to 2.2. This is the most difficult part. We start to work in this part five years ago. And finally, we are succeeded. Then we have the, uh, the KDS to separate the solid because they are very delicate. You cannot put it through a press, to anything. This is the type of water that we have, 99.99, 98, 95. And these are the, the, the solids. These solids are very special because they are protein. And one of the things that we are doing right now is growing aspergillus for the production of citric acid, which has a very high volume. Okay, we have also, one of the things that we have succeeded on, oh, is the decay is a store, and with this K, Fair Oaks has built a 50 tons uh, hour, a day, 50 tons a day, uh, fertilizer, bio fertilizer plant, where we have the different types of fertilizer according to whatever you need. You need iron, you need copper, you need saying whatever you need sulfur is incorporated or potassium. We have it here, and these are the type of granules that we have. 
Then this is the first, as far as we know, the first biofertilizer plant at that volume, at that capacity in the United States. I wanted to show you, share with you here, the concentrations of the second stage of solids removal. It's very consistent. This is the solids and this is the liquid, left in the liquid. Everything goes to the, to the liquid. And the nitrogen, I don't have the nitrogen here because nitrogen is absolutely mostly removed. And then the, the phosphorus, we have the potassium, the calcium, you can see the, here the different elements. Sodium is, is remain in the water. The aluminum is removed, sulfur is removed. You can see the magnesium, most of the, uh, the element Born is the only other one that also is very well removed, if we have it, and it's very important. This is one. This is in the raw effluent. This is the second in the, the, we did many, many tests, still we are doing that. The second test, and this is the uh, post-digest manure. And you can see that the post-digest manure, the phosphorus, is more, dif more difficult to remove. It's not as efficient as the raw manure. And the reason that is the form that phosphorus exists in the effluent, which is the calcium phosphate, more calcium phosphate, all the calcium phosphates are there. Also, we tested it in the raw manure. No separation, and we have been able to be successful, although it is not the, the most ideal but also we can have excellent removal. These are the, the, all the tests that we conducted. Also you can see that this is the solids that remain in the water. This you remove, also you can see this, two decimal points. Okay, and also in the post digested, the post digested, the removal of solids is easier, but the phosphorus is a little bit higher. You can see that mostly this is the raw manure and this is the post digested manure. The removal of the solids in the post digest is much easier. It's almost half in the liquid as this one. And also in the solid, you know, we have higher concentration of solids in the point that yes, it's much easier to remove uh, manure in the post-digestion, but also we have been able to success through the uh, manipulation of the coagulants and polymer into the separation. This is one of the important every term that we have we have to be able to develop technology. And this is one of the things that we have developed. This is a micro plate reader that is going to analyze ammonia, nitrate, nitrites in two minutes. This is used for ELISA, for the reading of ELISA. Also, we have an X-ray. We have been in Trident Sony, we have pioneered the X-ray uh, analysis, and then we get it from the half a million dollars into a 40,000 equipment, and we can use it directly into the soil, we can use it directly into the plant, we can go to the, to the, the, the grains, we can go into the silage, we can go into the manure solids, we can go into the water, we can go with a combination of these two equipment which are very ruggedized. We can go anywhere in the crop production from soil to harvest. Also, we can analyze the soil, the impact of the nutrients, the impact of the manure, how much is there, how much is going into the water, and also what fertilizers are you putting in it. What is the value of that fertilizer in NPK and also all the, ma the uh, magnesium, calcium, and microelements? We can analyze from in this one from sodium all the way to uranium. 
the, the fertilizer. Then we can do the, the, also the interesting part about the, the process that we started with manure is we can uh, follow the growth of the other plant, any plant, from seed all the way to harvest and determine where are the delicate points. And this is the analysis also in alfalfa, and we can do it also very important in the effort. With this my, uh, microplate reader, we can analyze the nitrogen, ammonia, nitrate, nitrites, and with this X-ray handheld, we can analyze the uh, uh, macro elements and micro elements from the soil all the way to America. Then the soil. And the other thing that we are going to do is, and we are doing this equipment and this equipment has a Wi-Fi and is connected by cellular technology to your lab, to your technician, to your agronomist, to your food scientists, to the soil scientists, and that's what we are right now. Where we are going to have, we started with the separation of man, man, manure, but the challenge that they presented at every turn, we have to solve the problem and create. Or use different equipment, or create the equipment and create the solutions. Okay, the, 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 what is the important thing? The manure handling system is to produce com uh, uh, commercial fertilizer. We already have a plant. The waste treatment to less than 0.5% dissolved solids. We are going, right now we are having recycled drinking water. The separation of the protein for amino acid production. Because all the proteins and the amino acids still are left in that 1.8% to 2.2%. Macro and micronutrients for a per kilo's growth in the production, production of citric acid which has a lot of value. <coughs> okay? Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Feedback, idea. Uh, question. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Yeah. Dairy farms, like do dairy farms have bigger problems with irrigating phosphorus to soil than maybe swine farms? Like the green spray pool systems in Carolina are you know, relative, relatively small amounts of the phosphorus. This, this system can be applied to swine, to manure, to, chip, to any type of manure. But my question is that a lot of people are targeting dissolved phosphorus, and it seems to me like the reason for doing that is because you can't. Am I right? In, is, is that really the purpose? Of the problem? It's not a function of you can't do it. It's when you do it, the nitrogen, the phosphorus nitrogen, yeah. gets out of balance. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's the problem. Balance that right. So because the, the, the nitrogen remain in the water, but we are doing with this all the, nit uh, the nitrogen and the phosphorus will be in the solids. Yeah. This is the reason that took so long, five years, to develop the second separation stage. And right now, we are ready to go. This, we run this one at um, five gallons a minute. Right now, we are going to do the, the test at 50 gallons a minute. And from there on, we are going to the market. Yes. Is there another question? Yes, sir. I had a question on your uh, effluent water quality. Yes. Uh, you had the two, uh, two sources. Two stage. It has to be two stage. Two stage. Yeah. So I shot it down. One of them was uh, 61 parts per million total solids. And the other one was 32 total solids. So out of the total solids, what's the split between dissolved solids and suspended solids? The, uh, uh, when we did the particles, I analyzed I have a life size of particles I analyzed. The particles are between 100 nanometers to less than 5 microns. That mean is or color, or is a protein. It's not a solid. And you can see it's a part of the color. It's, it's, a, it's amino acid, it's a protein, but it's not solid anymore. It's dissolved. Everything is dissolved. So, so dissolved. total solids yes. is 99.9. Yes, 99.9. The other 
what we have to do, the technology that you are pioneering, very small amounts, very efficient, has to be something very efficient, like that you are proposing. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, so it was just confusing, so then why don't you report it as TDS? No, because they are not, they are not suspended solids, they are dissolved. That, that's what I'm saying, you yeah. add it as TS, total yeah. solids, which yeah. implies both okay. suspended and... Okay, you are right, you are correct. So you were really reporting sure, yeah. Yes, yes, I too will do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there a question? Yes, ma'am. I don't know. But the, the interesting part about this is that over the last 15 years, we evolved mm -hmm. from doing it in a little jar to a building a large system of a thousand, a hundred. 500, 200 gallons per minute. But the other opportunity was <coughs> being able to develop technology. And this, I'm going to say this, but I don't want you to hold me account to that. We in agriculture, we do not have the technology of the pharmaceuticals, the biochemistries, and all the department. Agriculture is mostly an orphan in most of the universities. It is a, it's impossible that we can know, for example, the X-ray technology. We were the first people using X-ray technology to measure soil, to measure manure, to measure all of that, the first. <coughs> you know, when I presented the paper in a week, they called me, you are accepted. I said, what do you mean? You review it, say, yes, yes. But, you know, it's... Right, another question on your uh, manure cake. Yes, sir. So does it have odors? No, the, the second part, no, because the, you have to remember we have two. The first part, once you remove it, and it doesn't have a smell, and the second part doesn't have a smell at all. Either stage. Either stage, yes. Yes. And the other thing is because the sulfur is bounded to the particles, the phosphor doesn't remain in suspension. What about ammonia? Ammonia, all of them go to the, we have between 5 to 6% nitrogen. That means that the ammonia and all the protein, you do the, the, the amino acid analysis that we did four or five years ago, you can see the difference. The amino acids are there. That's the reason that this substrate, the second part, is an incredible substrate to grow any microorganism. Especially if we went for a superhelios. You know, we can develop nanopurifiers and all of those things, but you know that the, what we have discovered in the last 15 years is just amazing. You know, 15 years when I said this, I look like a unicorn, you know, yes, we, we, we have seen the picture of it, show it to me. It's, it's very, like I said, it's very lonely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, you're, you're producing a manure cake from the second solid separation. Yes. I'm assuming the solids content is about between 20 and 30 percent. Oh, no, the solid uh, content? It was 1.8 to 2.2. The final solids. The final solid, actually, the final solids has, yes, uh, but it's only, actually, the, the dryness of that cake is, is much better than the other because there is no fiber. You have to remember, the fiber is well. The, the, the moisture content is between 50 to 60 percent in the final, yes. 50, so 50 to 60 percent. Yeah. The, the sample you showed. Yes. And then, okay. right. you dry it then? Yes, yeah, so you dry it and then it's dried by the fertilizer company. How are they drying it after that? They dry it with the, the air. I don't know what they Rotary drum dryers they use. Yeah. You know, once so I those two dryers are co-mingled. Co the first and second stage something. solids are co-mingled and then that's delivered as a feedstock to the fertilizer plant. What produces the carry take care of that? <laughs> Is there another question? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Ricardo, you are producing citric acid. Yes. Do you envision the future farmers? Yes, we would like to produce it. We are 500 grams for $100. That's what we want. And that's what we want because right now the production of those uh, wild yeast or for that, all of that, 
is you have to combine all of those components physically. You know, get the nitrogen, get the carbon, get the phosphorus, the copper, the zinc, and the molybden molybdenum. And they, don't, they don't even know what is the element. We have all the elements, all from, you know, all the way from boron, all the way to americium. Is this cesium? It still shows it. But there is something that we have to do. We have to pasteurize the sample. Otherwise, you will grow, you know, all the, the bacteria, the other fungus, the other uh, native uh, things start to grow again. You have to pasteurize that. It's not just getting the cake. You have to pasteurize the cake. But the also, thing that you know, the Matthias, that you have worked in the X-ray also. But we are uh, pioneering this technology where we can go to the field right now, and squeeze the, the trigger, and we can measure the micro elements in the soil, wireless technology to a computer, to a computer center, or to your advisor, or to a USDA, to you, for example, who have been working, and then you can prescribe. And then in return, the farmer is going to have you need 30 pounds per acre to get 95% of the potential here. <coughs> and the only thing in, uh, that we are really understanding right now is that we can determine the hybrids and the varieties according to the landscape. Because this one is has tied with GPS. We put it, GPS, measure, and then you have the results. And in return, you have a node who tell you you need this amount of nitrogen, this amount of phosphorus, and this is it. It's you who have taken the decision. These are the cyber physical system that we do not have in the farm. Everybody has it, except us in agriculture. Yes, sir? Have you done much comparison of your XRF data to traditional weapons? Sure, yes. We have to do that in order to write a paper. You have to get, we did it. Uh, is my son. My son is the one who do those analysis. We, oh, we send it to five different labs to do ICP and high combustion because you have to compare them. Yeah. The amazing part is that when I receive the results between the most prestigious lab, even the difference with 50% with the same material. Mm -hmm. And I send the data, I say, I'm not going to pay you because you did the wrong test. 50% off. They have to redo it again, more careful. And they were closed. Yes, we measure with combustion, we measure with ICP, <coughs> and we calibrated the SMS uh, uh, for that. Has to be calibrated. And the correlation is perfect. Nitron is a little, nitrogen is a little bit off. But in agriculture, you know, you can be 10, 15% off and it still is very good. Uh, so, yes, if anyone else has any questions, please follow up with Dr. Roa afterwards. Uh, we're gonna. Well, I think we should move to the next. Yes, ma'am. The, uh, the next presentation. But you wanted to bring excitement here. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, you